family members welcome back to my youtube channel it's so great to be here with you all once again good morning good afternoon good evening whatever the time is as you are watching me thank you so much if you've always been here if you are a subscribed bona fide member i love you i appreciate you if you're new here welcome we love you cheers 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 <laughs> Guys, I'm super excited about this series I started, you know, about relocation, about, you know, how you can navigate your study abroad and, you know, make your dreams come true. And that is basically why I'm going to source out the very, very, you know, resourceful persons that I brought in um, on this channel to talk to you about how you can go about your application, you know, how you can, um, where you can even find these opportunities. Say. I hope nobody here um, who is looking forward to study abroad, you know, who is looking forward to some opportunities like this, is going to take some of uh, this information just, you know, like that, just anyhow, because th these are premium things coming to you guys. So don't joke with it. Don't joke with it. Everything you hear from any, um, you know, trainer or any resource person, I bring here any consultant, I bring here, please take it serious. I mean, these things are coming to you for free. Don't take it lightly at all. Don't take it lightly. Take everything you hear very serious. I love you. I'm so interested in your growth. And I'm looking forward to seeing you, you know, living the life of your dreams, you know, doing exactly what you want to do, that thing that you have so been desiring to do. I, I look forward to, you know, re you reaching um, that, that, that part of you. And I'm really looking forward to that. I'm really looking forward to you, you know, achieving your dreams, traveling the world, accessing opportunities that are there available for you i'm so looking forward to that time where you know all of your dreams you know become true and you see these things happening right before your very face okay now the person i have today is one amazing amazing brilliant young man i don't know if i should call it young man <laughs> dr lewis is is I mean, it's gold. It's gold. Take it from me. Dr. Lewis is gold. He's a lecturer in the UK. And this man has a lot of information. Like the day I engaged him in a conversation, I'm like, doctor, like you, you know all these things. You know all these things. And see, these are not information you pick on the street, on the road. These are premium premium information so call your neighbor call everybody you love call them together to come and be a part of this conversation so that they will not say ah mary has opportunity and she did not share with us so i don't want i don't want to set to quarry i don't want to hear anything like that okay so don't go nowhere i'll be right back let me just um you know introduce introduce my speaker let me just introduce my speaker and um i'm going to be right back in front of you So subscribed if you have not subscribed yet i don't know what you're waiting for subscribe and let's get you know be inducted in this family be a part of us and you know be a part of what we do now who is um the person who is you're going to be seeing in a few moments from now dr larry waju lewis is a dedicated resourceful and innovative academician researcher and information technology management is a professional with a phd um in information science professionally his primary focus is to equip teachers with knowledge tools skills and training to greater capacity and experience in equipping and preparing the student for relevance and the future of work it's combined over nine years guys nine years of lecturing experience and over 17 years experience in the it industry with a focus on student achievement and passion for scholarly work presenting and publishing at conferences and maintaining thought leadership in reviewed journals i tell you this man is not he's not just anybody like this man is premium premium <laughs> academically is an information science researcher with research interest in ict for um higher education educational technology e-learning mobile learning human computer interaction activity theory and personalized icts for teaching and learning is a persuasive and concise communicator you're going to see that today when i begin to have a conversation with him his experience in dealing with all levels of management for greater productivity 
and understanding. He has vast experience in working with multicultural themes and diverse professional backgrounds. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, ministerially and socially, and he is an insightful and impactful pastor and follower of Christ, a mentor and a coach. In fact, he's my mentor to many, especially especially um, within the ages of 12 to 30 years bracket. And he's a passionate believer, an active participator in the new Nigeria project. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the one and only Dr. Olari Wajo Lewis. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I present to you the one and only one and only Dr. Olari Waju Lewis. It has to be a clone. He's the only one bearing that name. Any other Olari Waju Lewis, you know, is counterfeit. He's the only, only Dr. Lewis. Hey, you know, when I was introducing you, I told everybody that you are my mentor, you are my coach, because ah, inside this thing, all of us are we all of us are getting this excellence together. No, Dr. Lewis, how can only you pack all this profile? I mean, only you. Uh -huh. Only uh, you. you just packed all this profile, you know, 17 years experience, seven, 10 years experience for what's it, Dr. Lewis, how did you even start, Seth? And guys, I told you he's a young man. I told you he's a young fireman. Please, oh, he's happily married, though. Nobody should take his name to Shiloh. Hey, Joe. Anyway, he's not even in Nigeria, so that's, if you like, take his name to Shiloh. That's, that's your business. <laughs> there's anointing. And I think he's playing, Dr. Lewis, how are you? So great to have you here. Thank you very much, Mary. I'm so honored. I'm so happy to be here with you this um, wonderful morning, reaching you live from Scotland in the UK. It's great to be on how is, how Mary Mary's today? platform. <laughs> oh, weather today? I'm used to the weather. The weather is about uh, four degrees today, this morning. Whoa. Four degrees, and uh, that's it, you know? <laughs> I'm just praying to God. God, please, you need to answer the prayer of your humble handmaid. Don't let our own weather here be up to four degrees. Because even at 17 degrees, guys, I'm shivering. You won't believe. Like, I'm, I'm, talking, I'm talking and smoke is coming out of my mouth. I'm serious. Like, it's that cold. It's very cold. It's, it's very, very cold. They didn't tell us. Mary, that one is still okay. No, no, it's not. That is okay. Ah, okay. I hear you. <laughs> so so uh before you came so, in uh, i'm fine i'm yeah. fine thank you so i've introduced Good. you and i've told my um audience that you are one resourceful person everybody should have in their circle i don't know how you mm. do it i don't know how you've been able to you know gather all these experiences i mean i did there i had a conversation with you like that time we spent together in my mind i'm like how come I never knew this part of Dr. Lewis? Because he doesn't even talk about it, guys. Like, if he doesn't tell you, you won't know. He's, you know that kind of, it's not like some of us that, you know, smart and we will shout. Some people are even angry now that I'm posting too much pictures. You understand? Some people are even angry. But Dr. Lewis is the type you will post pictures, you will not see him on Facebook. It's not, it's a, but when you go to LinkedIn, you see him there, you know. But how have you been able to? You know, do it. I don't know how, how. How did you even start? Maybe we should start from there. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much again, Mary, for bringing me to this platform. Um, number one, you see, I think my life start, my life changed from '93 when when God saved me. Right. Mm. Um, I remember '93. There was this wave. Um, it was like a revival that swept through uh, the city of Abokuta at that time. Most of us were in secondary school, and uh, that is how God saved most of us. Mm -hmm. And from that time, it has been from one level to the other. So let me make it clear for the beginning. that It is because Jesus saved this young man. That is why yeah. it's as if the life is programmed. Mm -hmm. that's, that's just it. Glory. Because from that 93, it was September 93, that was, that's my month of back. Right from then up to this moment, it has been from one direction to the other, just obeying and following and things evolve. So I would just say that that's the secret. Mm -hmm. There's no other secret anywhere. It's just about following the one who knows the map of the life mm -hmm. and he knows how, to you, how you are going to navigate, just follow him. And that is what has been happening. But 
there's something I want. I need to make clear here. Mm -hmm. People will say that, oh, it is God, it is God. Mm, wait. Yes, God has charted the path. If he says go to, go to the left and you don't go, mm. it will not happen. Mm. If he says you need to study or you get an inspiration to do something and you don't do it as he has said you should do, it will not happen. So there is also the part of our own work there. Mm. So if, for example, right from the beginning, right, um, I've always desired to study abroad, right? I've always decided to study abroad. And right from, I think, when I was in SS2, I got admission to Edinburgh Napier University. I got an admission to Robert Gordon University. I got admission to different universities in the UK. But the young man did not have money, hmm. right? I got, I, so we finished secondary school, went to OAU, Obafemi Awolo University. And Great. before I went to OAU, Great if yes. Mm -hmm. Before I went to OAU, something happened, something significant happened in my life. That was the first encounter I had about God making you to go through something that you do not plan for. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm the type that you hear his name on radio for excellence. I mean, academic excellence and everything like that, right from a young age. So going for JAM in 94, right, I got into an examination of, I'm an engineering, I have an engineering background, so I, I start for physics, chemistry, mathematics. Mm -hmm. And I got into the examination hall, and as they gave me the question paper, I went blank. <clears throat> I was like... Okay. I've wait, always, you know, I've always heard people talk about these things. I don't think I've seen somebody who it has happened to where, you know, somebody is very brilliant. You know that this is an A student, exceptional. And then you hear that, oh, this person got into the exam and they forget what yes, happened. I don't understand. It happened to me. In SS2, I had my YAC result from SS2. I already had all my results by SS2. So by the time I was going for JAM, it was just, okay, just go and do JAM and get to university. So I go into the examination hall, and I did not know what happened. I went blank. And I was like, ah, me. Me that I will do tutorial for people, me that I will teach people, I'm not blank. By the time the time was up, I knew that I failed the jam. Result came out, I had 188. <clears throat> uh -uh. And my, my, my father called me when the result came out. He said, Larry, do you want to go to university? I said, Aid me. Me, you're asking me whether I want to go to university. Ah, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> what, what an insult. <laughs> yes. Yeah, of all people. <clears throat> mm. So that made me to have a kind of reflection. I went back, I went to, I went to ask questions. I had a kind of pastoral receipt for myself and I asked a question. And I said, God, why did this happen? And the answer I got was very humbling. He said that the way you are going, you are already showing us if it is you that I have to humble you. Ah. Mm. Mm. Okay. <laughs> I said, eh? This is some okay. stuff going on right here. Mm. Yeah. And I said, okay. So that was the beginning of of me encountering, um, listening, and following a path that even if something looks as if it is not right, don't fret. Go and ask, why is this thing happening? Mm. So I heard, so that was, he said he had to humble him, me and show me that he's the one that is in charge. Ah, I said, okay. Wow. So I now went for another um, exam. But between August, August uh, 1995 and December 1st, mm. 1995, I was in a coaching program in Lagos preparing for job. That is the first time I changed the part of my life. Hmm. I'll, I'll go for school. I'll go for uh, coaching from around 8 in the morning, come back around 4. I will stay with my grandparents that time. Uh, by 6, Seven by seven, I'm, I'm, I've gone to sleep. Twelve, I'm all do quiet time between twelve and two. Then from two to six, I'm studying. Six, go and prepare, go for school. I was doing that for three and a half months, for three months and maybe a week. Wow. It was during that period that I learned how to pray long range prayers. <laughs> so I now understood the process because you have been humbled now. Mm -hmm. Yes, I've been humbled. Mm. So I now understood, I understood, that was when I started praying some prayers that 
now, I mean, at this age, I now understand that this is, this is how this thing works, but it started that time. Hmm. So in OAU, in, so before I go to OAU, I heard that OAU, they usually, um, there is a number that usually in, in Jambite's room, I said, God, in my own room, it must be this number. Mm. When I got to Ife, it was so. I said, when I'm going to Ife, I need three friends. They must be intelligent. They must fear you. They must do this. When I got to Ife, I met those three friends. Mm. So that prepared the way for me. By the time I go to AU, it was for scratch result that I got from part one. Wow. And that put me on Dean's list. I mean, on VC list. That was the first time my name would come out in newspaper. I got a book voucher, went to buy books that I would need for the other years. And that's how the thing began. So I went from first class to two, 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 two then came back to four, two, one. And as I finished for a two, one in OAU and prepared me for scholarship again. So I had scholarship in, in so I had two scholarship in IFE. I got scholarship for, uh, for my master's through Gose government, full scholarship. And I also got scholarship for my PhD. So that mm. has been the part trajectory it's been like that mm. yeah you know i love the fact that you are beginning this conversation from you just have to know your god for yourself and i'm, I'm just hoping that somebody is going to connect with this because um personally for me you know there, there's something somebody told me some time ago and you know it was a very deep conversation with one of my mommies back then in nigeria and she just she was just saying something and then she said mary she said it's in your and i'm going to say it here she said yeah. um, um don't get to a point where you are so full of yourself like majora iloju yeah majora was, iloju, yeah you know and so that has always been my guiding like instruction every time. So even when I get a particular thing or I attend something, I still know that, babe, if God takes away his grace from your life, you are as empty as anything. There's something, you know, when you were talking, I looked this way because there's some, there's an inscription on my wall. So I have these sticky notes. I write somehow, okay. maybe sometimes when I'm writing and then, you know, something just drops. I have two right here now. Just write it. And one of it says, Mary, God and his purposes are above you. No matter what you do or where you get to, you are still hmm. a servant of God. No pride. No pride that I remain humble in the secret place. You know, Absolutely. even you said that, that thing connected with me. Because again, so somebody like me, right, who is, you know, seemingly out there, not so much out there because this is still a journey. We're not even there yet. Yeah. You know, a yeah. lot of people have this notion that ah, these people, you know, they don't even have spiritual life. They don't have their, you know, secret place. But it is not, it is not my business. You know, that's not yeah. my business. It is between me and God. So I love yeah. that we have been able to establish that fact that, see guys, you can't do anything outside God if God is not the one yeah. you, if God is not yeah. the one charting your course. That's the truth. You are going that's the truth. to cry as in yeah. and your crash is going to be so mighty it will be so massive. terrible massive amazing thank you so much sir for that now let's yeah. get the conversation because you also talked about you know how a lot of people say oh how did you get there oh it is god it's by grace you know it is god we know it is god we know but look at what you said now you know you had to go through you had to immerse yourself in a coaching series you know yeah. you changed the pattern um, if yeah. you had been, you know, sleeping 10 hours before, you began to sleep maybe four hours or five yeah. hours because you knew that there was now something ahead of you that you were pursuing. Yeah. Yeah. Will I be right to say that um, maybe a lot of people in my generation are not very as hungry enough as they should be for some of mm. the things that they desire? Because, you know, I've seen a lot of people, I, I think people just feel like study abroad or let me not even use study abroad and probably just feel like you know this big dream that they have is just something they'll pick along the way do mm -hmm. you think it just happened by just like that by chance or what do you say to this kind of thing because i see now that there has there's some a level of intentionality but again, okay. you know, people abuse this word intentionality so much that I, I begin to get irritated about it. Like, people just say you have to be intentional, you have to be intentional. What exactly does intentionality mean in this sphere of okay. conversation? Okay, okay. I will use a life example because that, that I, I believe people will to relate with that. 
a live example for that. Mm. Now, <clears throat> when I finished in the way you um, mechanical engineering uh, two one, I I switched into IT. Okay. How did I switch into IT? A friend of mine came to me with an idea that oh, let us set up an internet resource center in the city of Ilaro in Ogun State. And uh, we came together. I raised funds from family, mm -hmm. right? And we set up that internet resource center. That was between 2002, end of 2002 to around 2003, just before we went for service year. Mm -hmm. Now, during service year, I was shuttling different Lagos, Delta, Ogo State. That was my short lane during that period. Mm -hmm. I served in Delta State. But one thing happened uh, in 2003. Okay. In my meditation, quiet time, mm -hmm. I just had this inspiration. Go and present a proposal to the Ogo State government for setup of internet resource center. Mm -hmm. I said, who am I in the whole of Ogo State to present a proposal? I'm just a fresh person from university. I'm not even sad because OAU didn't process our uh, YA, I mean, sorry, NYC on time. We waited for about over a year before we went for, for NYC. And I went to my mom, um, the primary secretary that time. I said, uh, I want to present this thing. She said, they want to do election now. That why don't you wait till after? That was a governor at that time. Only for the election to hold, and the governor who was there was was defeated. And that was when, yes, that was when Otobagbenga Daniel became the governor of Ogo State. Mm. Now, I'm sharing this because I want us to understand process and the things that you need to do before you can get to. When, when God gives you inspiration to go and do something, it's actually more than what you think, right? Mm. So when the new governor came in, I was like, wow new face, new system. Mm -hmm. So he now set up for the very first time Bureau of ICT in Ogo State. Very first time. There's never been ICT in Ogo State before that time. So he now set up Bureau of ICT. He appointed a consultant, right? Mm -hmm. So I went to meet my mommy again. I said, mommy, now they have, they have now even created a place, Bureau mm -hmm. of ICT mm -hmm. uh, for ICT. So I think this is an opportunity for me. Mm -hmm. As God will have it, the person who was a permanent secretary assigned to that new bureau was her own senior when she was in secondary school, five years senior, like somebody like let's say SS2 and GS1. So she was in like SS2, my mom was in GS1 in their own time. And she now went to tell her, she said, okay, I will tell the consultant. Now both of them now took me to the office of the consultant, and the consultant said that. Since he is the one that says he wants to present something, you too can go. Leave him. Okay. He took me to his conference room. <clears throat> he sat on the other side of the table. I was on, I was on the other side and I sat down. I presented everything. That day, by the time I finished, he said, I'm going to be his technical assistant. He wow. gave me an office in his office that day. Uh -uh. <laughs> he, he, wow. he went to his, he went to his confidential secretary and said, Larry is going to be my technical assistant. This will be his desk. This is this thing. And that is how I became on, announced on, uh, it was not advertised, technical All assistant. All right, recognized. <laughs> wow. And he started giving me rules. He would give me some stipends and everything like that. I was doing it diligently. Hmm. And when the time for service came, I said, sir, I need to go for service. I said, okay. So once in a while, when I have free time, I will come and go. Until a day came, he sent a text message to me. He said, Larry, have you seen the advert in Guardian of Yes of, is it that, that week or something? I said, no, hmm. I will I read paper. He said, Ogo State is sponsoring people for scholarship. Go and check. You may be able to get it. So I wouldn't have known about that. If he didn't tell you. That is how, if he didn't tell me, because I was in Delta. That is how I went to find newspaper. I said, wow, they want to sponsor about eight categories 
ICT, agriculture, housing, sports and development. He want he was building human capital. OGT is my benefactor any day. Hmm. He was building human capital for one state. He said he wanted to invest in people. And the beauty of it is that they allow the thing to be free process. No influence from outside. Wow. They allowed it to be free flow. Many people are applied. Right? They, did, they did the first screening, second screening. The last screening was an interview. I remember I was in an interview for about 25 minutes. Right? And that is how I won the scholarship in Ogo hmm. 20 2005 left. They divided us into two. Some people left in January, some people left in September, and that is how I left for the UK first time out of the country. Now, why did I share this story? Mm. We are talking about intentionality. Mm -hmm. If at the beginning that I said, go and present something to the state government, and if there was a change of government, the fate of some people will have failed. It's just like you get inspiration, God tells you to go and do something. Say, Who am I? How am I going to do this thing? It's like Moses. Mm. I, I don't have, I, I can't speak. I'm a samurai, I'm doing, I'm doing this. But there was more. There, there was more behind that thing. At mm. the end of the day, that is how I got to scholarship. You know? Hmm. Wow. You know, it gives so there is, there is, there is a part of work there. You must do your work. Mm. You just must do your own part. You must do If you don't do your own part, it won't happen. Mm. Mm. I say, amazing. Thank you so much. You know, again, um, this conversation around intentionality, again, brings me to a recent conversation I was having with myself about the people in your life's part time. And there's mm. something I have learned, and it's very, very significant that God in his, in his wisdom bring people you need in your life part time. If they are the, if they are the wrong people for you, um, God can make them become the right people for your own sake. Just because he wants to true them, do something in your own life. But if at the end of the day, they, they, they are the, real, the wrong people and they probably do not change, just know that they were never meant to be in your life. Yes. So again, I'm beginning to Absolutely. understand divine positioning with people, you know, and these things are now making sense because guess what? You probably would not have heard of that opportunity if that man had not even called you. Number one, not yeah, even if he had not called you. If you probably had not even worked with him before, he may not remember, he may not know you. He won't and remember there you. Is even a, there is even a conversation of being at the right place at the right time, working with the right people at the right, right time. Yes. Holy Spirit. Hmm. Yes. Okay, I, I feel like this is some deliverance for somebody right here. <laughs> Okay, good. Okay. Yes. Let me, let me come back to interviewers mode before I enter. Before I enter this. <laughs> enter switch <I> would. <laughs> oh, sweet Lord, this is interesting. Mm. Now let's talk about you know getting the scholarship and then traveling to the UK. How were you able to unearth these opportunities for yourself? Because another thing is, I feel like another thing that people struggle with is when they now get these opportunities, finally mm. you've gotten it. Some people don't even know how to now maximize that opportunity and yeah. you know, exhaust the options that it comes with. One of the conversations yeah. again I was having with my friend recently was, you know, I just, so I just came over to Cyprus for those who know, and you know we're yeah. now talking about okay so it's been like three months um this is like our third month yeah. because we came together in cyprus and yeah. we're now saying okay you know what um we wanted to stay at least for three months like just to understand what is happening you know see the environment understand the terrain see the associations that you know african communities that are working how you can be a part and then he said something he said um how you meet people is more important than meeting them. So it's how you meet people, you know, on the platform, on the basis at which you meet people is, is, more, is more important than even meeting them. There are people yeah. that you will probably just meet in a restaurant, right, in a joint, everybody's there and talking together. It's yeah. different from when you meet them in a room filled up with, you know, intellectuals, diplomats, and you are called to contribute 
to the yeah. station. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, in the part of maximizing opportunities, how were you able to do it? Because now you went to the UK at that time, you know, for your master's, you know, I, I don't know if you came back, but you went yeah. back again. You know, yeah. how, how were you able to squeeze out these opportunities for your own benefit? How did they happen? Right. Okay. Now, I am intentional about um, the impression I make on people mm. who are not in my circle for the first time. Okay. I hear that. Mm, I hear that. Now, today, right, I, I can say today I have friends in several countries and I'm still in touch with them. Mm. Now, when I came for my master's in the, in the UK in 05, right, I had um, people from Asia, China, um, Malaysia, India, Dubai, Ghanaians. I had friends from all over. Mm. in those, those classes. I have friends in lecturers. Even the supervisor that supervised me, it will interest you how I got to know that person. Mm. Because I knew what I wanted to come and do in UK for masters, I had an idea of what I wanted to do for my thesis from before I left Nigeria. The very first week that I got to UK, right? I went to check all the staff profile. I checked their research interests. First week, we'll check their research interests. I saw three people who, who, are, who, had, in, who had a competence in what I wanted to do. Mm. And I sent a mail to the three of them. One of them first replied. Week. <laughs> yeah, first week, yes. Wow. We're talking about intentionality, Abby. We're talking about mm -hmm. being intentional, be engaging mm -hmm. all the process. It's available. So I said, I sent the mail the first week. One of them replied and she said, you have just started. I said, yes, I know what I want to do. And I feel mm -hmm. that you are, you have the skill in it and I'm interested. I would like to work with you. She was surprised. Of course. Anybody so she said that, well, surprised. yeah, first week. So she was surprised. So, the first, so she said that, okay, I should let somebody know. That person is the head of research in the university, Nottumba University to be precise. So I sent a mail to that one, copied her, the person who is talking to me, that this is the thing. So by the time they were going to allocate supervisors for postgraduate and for master student, she was the one assigned to me. Wow. Yeah. So I, I made that impression as somebody who had drive from the beginning with her. Hmm. I kept in touch with her. By the time I was applying for PhD admission in Rose, at Rose University, South Africa, right? I needed the referees. Now, I finished, yes, I finished my master's in 2006. I went for PhD in 2015. How many years is that? That's about close to... Um, almost 10 years. 2016. Nine. About almost, almost 10, nine years, yeah. about. Now, because I have been in touch with her, all the processes, because I've tried to get admission before then, I've tried to get, in fact, I, that was the time I got admission of 50% scholarship in, in the UK for PSG, which did not within, go through at the end of the day. But I've always been in touch. I need you to do reference. I didn't just close the chapter that I finished master's and I closed it in that, that way. No, mm -hmm. I was in touch. Mm -hmm. So by the time I was going to get the admission for um, South Africa, she was part of the people that did reference for me because she will they, will, they want to find out whether this person has capacity to do research. Mm. So imagine a nine year relationship. I've not seen her, I've not, I, I was not seeing her for nine years, but mm. I was in touch in Mills. Mm. When I got my PhD, I told her I started. I, when I got it, when I finally got it, I told her I've been in touch. Mm. The governor of Ogo State, when, during the time that I got my scholarship for my master's, was about going to Daniel. Right from the time that I got the scholarship till this day, there is no time that I don't message him. On his bad day, I will greet him, send a mm -hmm. message to him on his bad day, 
on his uh, anytime i'm doing something mm -hmm. like okay maybe i'm appointed for something i send message to him so i just want to appreciate it because this opportunity that he gave me that time That's is what has provided the mm -hmm. foundation for this i've been in touch hmm. right and so if it mentioned land rates of my he will not say it doesn't he will he knows me because i've been in touch hmm. he does not need me you know you know <laughs> i don't know sincerely he he's made hmm. Hmm. but i was in touch i was building a relationship with somebody like like a father hmm. but he, he would just say oh well done this one he would just he will reply with a text message and that's all. I don't disturb him every time. Just keep in touch. Exactly where I'm coming to right now. You know, I, I love the fact that we are having these conversations. And like I said before, I brought you on. These are like detailed informations and things that people overlook. People don't even know yeah. that these things count. They matter. Yeah. Yeah. Look at how you have kept and sustained these relationships. You know, it's been years. Yeah. Now, two yeah. things specifically I want to, you know, hammer on. You maintained the relationship and you understood the kind of relationship. Yeah. A lot of mistakes, I feel like the mistake a lot of people also do is they abuse opportunities and privileges because you have access to somebody. Does you, know. you, you, you Sometimes you misbehave, right? Somebody did uh -huh. something very recently and I'm still going to talk about it. God knows I'm still going to talk about it. Because yeah. my generation lack discipline. Yeah, my that's, that's, that's a challenge. Lack discipline. Like, yeah. so this person got an opportunity, you know, to be mentored by one of the one white woman, you know, who yeah. should be my mentor come 2022. And for you to be on this woman's mentorship, it's not it's not small dollars. It is not mm -hmm. small. I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. So one thing led to the other. She got this scholarship and she got this opportunity to sit with this woman, you know, have a private conversation with her. This is somebody who is a top person on the board of John Maxwell team. I'm telling you the truth. And then finally, you know, this lady will be sending me a message. Oh, please. Um, we've not been able to schedule a meeting because she's gotten the you know, opportunity for some months now. But this woman has been busy. Mentors have things they're doing with their lives. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So finally, 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 we're able to secure a time to say, okay, you know what? Uh, this is the time this woman will be able to meet with you. And then everybody yeah. agreed. She was aware. The woman was aware. And guess what? On the day this lady was meant to meet this woman, guess who did she didn't show up? Guess who, show up. guess who didn't show up? I'm telling you, I could not believe it in my wife. The girl did not show up. In my wildest dream, I'm telling you. In my in my wildest dream, like as I'm talking about it now, like I'm still amazed. I'm still surprised. You know, the funny thing was, <laughs> she didn't show up, and then wow. this, this woman actually now came to 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 the to the group because so we are in the group with some one other lady. And then she yeah. said, you need to tell, because I'm trying to reinforce something here. There's a level yeah. of discipline that is required for you to get to where you want to get to. You, this, so let me just let me just calm down because I'm already getting this. <laughs> Each time I think about it, I'm like, how, how can you do this? Now, this, uh, lady, no. said, this lady said, um, just for you to be aware, I shall do the call with so -so person this afternoon. I waited for 15 minutes, but she didn't, she didn't show up. Sadly, I have no other time between now and February next year. I go on leave that today till first week of February. Okay, then we began to apologize. She, then she said, I have messaged that we had set it up. So, not sure what happened. Happy to give it a go February next year. But I'm pushed for wow. time now this week, and next week I'm on leave. Then we are like, okay, we are sorry, ma'am. We are sorry, ma'am. As in, we had to start apologizing for your own. Uh. And then this woman says, I got a message from her that she slept off. How? How? Somebody, somebody pour me water. How? How? And then you now you mess up. Then you now send this woman in. That you slept off. That, you slept uh, that, that is that's that's what I'm talk talking about. She said discipline. She said she knows medication, you know, she took medication and she didn't wake up. And then the woman said, sorry, but you should have set an alarm. She said she did, but she missed the call. Ha. <laughs> Honestly, 
<laughs> so I'm reading that the question. Why. She said, honestly, I can't do anything now until February. I have offered that uh. story. She said, if this lady does not value the time enough to set an alarm to be on the call, she won't value this session. I will reach out to her in February and try to reset it. And you know, as I was what reading, is it? as I was reading these words, as in I was shaking. Me, I was shaking, and I'm like, the, I'm like, what has my generation done? What I don't do you, know. Do you have an idea? Do you have an idea of the, the impression that that has made in the life in the heart of that woman? There are some things that you don't do. See, if an opportunity comes right for that lady to move that mentor will think twice before recommending her hmm. because recommendation is your profile on the line i'll say that again hmm. if somebody is going to recommend you that is putting the person's profile on the line hmm. so the people are careful to recommend hmm. So if, because they will say that if I go and recommend this pe person to this place and they, they, will, they, will, they will come back to her and tell her that, look at the person you sent That's to her. Mm, mm. uh -huh. So those are the things. And so, so <clears throat> opportunities will come. Like I was saying earlier, opportunities will come. But if you're not definite, if you're not clear about what you want, right, it will come. It will come to your front like this and you not see it. Discipline is required to act to receive opportunities, mm. and God will always provide avenues for us for you to attain what you are looking for. One thing about the younger generation, the generation of people born in the nineties, hmm? our generation, <laughs> our <Wow, my> nineties, <laughs> the people born in the nineties is this, right? Um. We have to be, they need to be clear about what they want. Like, for example, let me give you the story of, um, of getting PhD, PhD funding. Mm, okay. PhD funding that I got is through, um, they will call them TED Fund via my university in Nigeria, Taishan University of Education. There was a time the governor before. The, the current one in Ogo State, right? Wanted to scrap the university. Mm -hmm. And um, they had already announced that it was going to be scrapped. They had stopped some things. So few of us, we came together. Now, this is, this is another example of doing something that God will recognize. Some people will say, universe will recognize that they have sown something good into the universe. Mm, that something come will back. come back. Mm. Eh? All right. So we came together, about six of us, to go and plead the cause for the institution. Mm. The funding that was supposed to come from Ted Fund had been stopped from the institution. And we now decided that let's go on this journey. We started the journey around, uh, I think, 20, maybe 2013, there about, for about four months. We are traveling from Ojebu. So our bell cutter, okay, mm. also on our own foil. We go and meet directors, go and meet the secretary to the state government. We are having different meetings. As sir, if you do this thing, it's going to affect a lot of lives. Yes. It's going to affect a lot of people. Some people will not be able to achieve their career goals and everything like that. After four months, different things have happened. Mm. Only for us to go there one particular day, and we discover that the person who was to be the vice chancellor appointed by the governor mm -hmm. was, was in the okay, was in Okemos on that day. Mm. So the SSG told her that there are some people that are from university. They have been coming here for some months, mm. pleading the course of university that um, I think you should, you should meet them. Mm. So I think she was about to leave in the car park. They now told her that we are here. So we now came to, we went to greet her. Do you know the first thing she did when she assumed office? Mm. She summoned us to her office, 
and they said that they should issue a letter of commendation to us wow. for being selfless in going out of our way to go and plead the cause of investing so that investing will not lose the fund. Hmm. At the end of the day, we got commendation. So the governor reversed everything. Wow. And they now said that, okay, third fund, you can now release funds to these people. You know what she did? She said that most of you, about four of us, we are not, we are still young in the university. Mm. We did not qualify to go for study abroad. She said that because of what you did, I'm going to waive that requirement that you cannot plead the course of the institution and not partake when the good come. Wow. <laughs> so she waived it. She waived that requirement for us. And that is how some of us were able to access the phone to go and study abroad on PhD. On a good day, I did not qualify because I have not reached the number of years, but it was waived. It's like one good turn deserves another, as they usually say. Wow. That is what led to it all. Wow. And that is how the young man got PhD fund. So if they ask me today, I have scholarship for undergraduate, I have for masters, I have for PhD. Wow. Wow. That is the wow. journey. That's the journey. This... Now look at how look at how the good you did. Just random act of service. Just yeah. just one random act of act of yeah. selflessness look yeah. at how it has turned out yeah. and i love the fact that you know as we go on in this conversation there are different things life principles life lessons that are dropping the wise ones will yeah. take it you will understand it you yeah. know um do all the good you can for all the people you can at in any yes. way you can you know did that word i i don't yes. forget it and I yes. remember, I remember also last year when I was pressing into this year. So Joyce Daniels does um, every December she does Wiser Nation, you know, studying the book of mm. Proverbs every mm. day. So she teaches, she teaches one chapter per day, and then they're also Wiser. And so I, I specifically didn't join this month because I felt like I'd learned some things like the last one she did. I don't mm. want to overload your information, yes. overload. but one of the things I took out from that session from last year is that don't let a, a day go without you being kind to somebody. Yeah. Don't, like before your day ends, before you sleep, ask yourself, have I, have I been kind to somebody today? Have I yeah. done something for somebody today? She said, yeah. it's, a, it's just, a, it's a, it should become your lifestyle. So yeah. either the person deserves it or the person does not deserve it. You're not doing it because the person deserves it. You're doing it because no. that is your own makeup. You yeah. have now become a kind person and the universe, like you said, or God, however, has the way of rewarding every act of kindness you do. Either Absolutely. intentionally or you do not do it intentionally as far as your heart is pure and your heart is right towards that act. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's the truth. That's the truth. And let me now go into this uh, because there's this thing about people want to explore opportunities abroad. Mm -hmm. People want to study abroad. You know, since like I moved to the UK, started this lecturing in University of Dundee. And um, several people have been are reaching out to me mm -hmm. about, I think it was in October one, I organized a, a free seminar where I, I called one of my very close cousins. He's my first cousin. He too is Dr. O. Luis. Wow. He's, a, he's, a, he's an immigration lawyer in the UK, over 10 years experience in the UK. So I called him. I said, that guy, um, there's this video that was going around by the High Commissioner of Nigeria um, about uh, post-study visa in the UK. People want to jump out to UK. And I said, mm, guys, if it is to jump out, that is escape to UK mm -hmm. on study routes, right? If there is a way around it. Mm -hmm. there, is more, yes. there is more behind that video that people are watching mm. than what it is. So, so I decided that let me do this thing. It's on my own field. So I, 
I did the, I called my designer to do the flyer and it was October 1 that we had the, the thing, about 70 people were is on it, that Is call. it on your YouTube page? Is it on your YouTube page? Um, I've not uploaded it. Okay, okay, okay. Though I, I can upload it for people to see. Right. So I shared the, I, I shared it, I, I gave access to everyone that was, that registered, mm. but I can upload it, yeah. That, now that you mentioned it, let me even upload it on my YouTube page. Because <laughs> that interview shared a lot that people needed to know. Mm. Now, so, so let me just put a caveat for those who don't know, Dr. Lewis yes. has a YouTube page that you should go and check, like Mentors Lounge. That place, is, it has, see, that, <laughs> that place is a resource center. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. And you just get to learn these things for free. Like, yeah. You get to learn from people's experience, people's stories. Yeah. These things are there. Go and check it. I'll put the link. I'll put the link in the description. Yeah. Go and check it. So I'll upload it for people to be able to see. So, so for example, for the UK, right? Mm -hmm. the, the people say that I want to get post-study visa of two years. Do they know that when they finish their master's, they're going to spend nothing less than two thousand pounds to apply for that post study? They don't know. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's not free. <laughs> okay. Mm. If you want to live in the UK, because most people traveling on on PhD on on study route, is because they want to come and settle in the UK. Mm -hmm. But there is a course that you need to do that will put you in a best place to be able to stay because if you do a course that is not relevant to the system mm -hmm. and you finish your your program and you you start looking for a job for two years if you don't get it you'll be back to square one whoa yeah okay these are things that i try to encourage people that look and that is why it's as it may be because i'm not it's not because i'm in it but it is taking over it has mm -hmm. taken over Mm, so definitely. if anybody wants to do anything, it must look at something that is still, that has some IT inside it or some I health stuff inside it mm. or social work inside it. Mm. Things that they need. These are the, these are the, these are the career that, will, uh, these are the careers that will be relevant in time. In, okay. Yes. Mm. Now, if, if, if you do something in that area, right, it will be easy for you to get a job or something that will guarantee having the work permit that you need that will lead you to have permanent residence. Mm. These are things that people don't know, right? And there are so many other countries. There is Estonia, there is Finland, mm. there is Holland. Mm. There's Austria, um, there's Australia. There's, there's, there's so many of them there. Mm. There's Germany, right? That are not as expensive as the UK. Now, for people who are bent on UK, I tell people the best option is PSG. Mm. Why? Because there are funding for PSG. You have, you have better chance of having full funding in PSG than any other level. But for other European countries, you have more opportunities for master's funding. Yeah. Where you will not get funding most is your first degree. Mm. because they know that that one is like four years or three years yeah so, so before you can get those ones it's not as if they are not available mm. but you will try mm. do you understand mm. and these are things there are so many options and and those ones are in most european countries there are many sources of funding which they were able to get so these are things and there's another thing that people don't do hmm. people don't document their processes they don't document their mm. their life. Mm. You will call them. You are going to apply. You are going to submit a personal statement. You are going to account. Why do Why do you want to come to this place? They are not able to. They don't have things that will excite the outside world, right? Mm. They tell people do volunteer, do something that is in leadership, do something that is in a, in a, a community development, do these things. So that they will see you as a resourceful person, not just an academic or somebody who is only doing academics. When I was in OAU, I did not do academic alone, right? I was active in fellowship. I was also into politics because I contested for, I mean, I did um, politics. I was president of my uh, me Mechanical Engineering Student Association. Mm -hmm. So I did politics, I did church, mm -hmm. I did academics. You must be seen as somebody who is resourceful. 
Hmm. These are things that will fill your personal statement. You know, you have, been, you, have been, you, have, you have done something here. You have done something here. Hmm. You must be intentional, hmm. right? You somebody said he wants to travel out. He doesn't have transcripts. Hmm. Eh? You are How? not requesting. Do you want to fly? How? How? What do you, what are you going to do there? You don't have transcripts. <laughs> and you know, I have been getting transcripts right from part one. So exams and record knew me. This right from part one. I didn't wait till I got to part five before I got hmm. my transfer. Wow, are you serious? These are things that people need to be get. As in, you must, you must, for example, they said that if you are going to Lagos, right, hmm. and you're living from Ibadan or from Ogo State or from hmm. anywhere, hmm. ask, how do you get to Lagos? Okay, you will need to board a car at least. Hmm. If you want to go and board at the park, hmm. or you want to go and board a bus, or you want to hire it, you must find out the routes. Mm -hmm. so, if, you so if you want to come to any travel out, right? Mm -hmm. There's some things that you need to do. Mm -hmm. If you ask people to, like, for example, there was somebody who reached mm -hmm. out to me, um, sir, I have, uh, I, I got a, a, like a decision in my master's. I had mm -hmm. this thing. And I said, okay, have you obtained your transcript? The person said no. Ah. Okay, start doing this thing. The person does not have, Passport. International, hey, international passport, Abi. Person does not have international passport. passport. I know international to, passport. You want to go and do masters in the university that debuts in your, your state, Abi. Then another thing that people misconcept, uh, misconstrue in all these things. Traveling out is not cheap. Even if you are going to get scholarship, it's not cheap. You are going to spend money <laughs> on, on, for example, Everyone passport in Nigeria today is between 35 to 45,000. No, sir. No, that's not up to date. The last time I asked, it was 70,000. Because if you, pay, messy. if you pay 35,000, you will not see paper to print your passport. So they will tell you there's no Lord. So if you want the one that will come out sharp, sharp, like in. That key. Yes. Yes. You see? You, you, then, um, for example, let me let me give you an instance. When I wanted to apply for masters, right? I I started driving early, very early. So when I, when 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 we wanted to apply for that masters uh, a scholarship in the UK, I wanted to go to AU. It got I got a bus. I was one that drove the bus from Ogo State to Ife. Mm took my mates, we went to, because there are several of us that won that scholarship. We went to where you, we went to process transcripts. Now, I got my transcript very fast that day that we went there. Why? Because they already had a record as in, it was- You, you were always coming every year. I'm always coming. Mm. Wow. So then they got out very fast. We pay money for transport, for fuel and everything, go, go there. But, uh, pay money for, for, for passports. Even if you are going to get scholarship, some people don't even want to make any efforts, hmm. right? Maybe, 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 okay, maybe, maybe the idea, <laughs> maybe the idea of scholarship that a lot of people have is that once it's scholarship, then it is, you know, you know, it's fully now, fully funded. Uh, maybe definitely. as you hear fully funded, your, 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 your brain just says everything is paid in full, like Jesus Christ, you know, paid in full. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh. <laughs> it's funny. It's funny. I don't That's know. True. You you must make efforts. It's, it's very yeah. true. You must very make important. Effort. You know, talking about you know them when you were talking about you know documentation, writing yeah. your you know motivation letter, your cover letter, and all that. <laughs> the previous guest I had made an example. She said there was somebody who was contacted an agent, you know, to write okay. his um, statement, for, statement. For, yeah. her, for her, to write her statement for her. And you will not believe this agent did a copy and paste. Copied another person's motivation letter, copied it and pasted it for her, and that lady took it to the embassy. And when they checked it, they saw that this thing was exactly the same as you know, somebody's own. And you know, there's a way these people have this information. There's a way they have the information. You know, and today, the, the, the other guest I said, she said, 
Say it to the point that if you have been denied visa before, don't go there and say, I have not been denied visa because they will check. And the records are there. Now she said, by the time they found out, they banned this lady. She cannot apply in any other, any other embassy for five Precious years. Lord, precious Lord. For That's five crazy. years. That is, see, let me, let me just uh, zoom in on that. Um, by the grace of God, I've traveled wide, right? Hmm. That was a time, um, I think that was in, oh, is it 05 or 06 now? Um, I went to the US embassy with my wife in the UK. We wanted to go for visiting hmm. and we were denied. Wow. Right? They said that we did not have strong ties to the UK. That was the reason. They said we have more ties in Nigeria than in the UK. Ah. And that was, the, that was the reason they put there. Now, every application for visa that I've made after that time, whether it's to South Africa, whether it is to Ireland when I, or UK, wherever, I document everything. Have you been denied visa before? Yes. Why were you denied visa? It was at the U.S. Embassy in the London, and I did, they gave this reason. That hmm. did not stop them from not issuing me visa. Hmm. Be consistent, never lie. Hmm. Tell the truth every time. That's another thing. Be consistent. And one thing I always do is, uh, if I apply for one visa ten years ago, I have the I have the printout of what everything I submitted. Though. Wow, you keep them. You keep those. Decades. I keep record. Yes, those records. I have files. My parents taught me how to do filing, right? From when we were in maybe primary school, secondary school. So I have files. Even for my children now, I have files for them. Hmm. Everything is documented. These things, they are things that people. I have files. I, <laughs> you know, you know. Don't I have, don't know. Don't I have know. folders. I have everything documented, hmm. both electronic and printed. I have files. So you, hmm. you go back and check, okay, what did you say here? Okay, I said this thing uh, in 2005. I must say it again now. Hmm. You, hmm. you must keep records. You know, they always say that Africa, we don't care, well, Nigeria, we don't keep records. And that's, and that is, it's not for everybody, but it is, it is too much. We hmm. need to change that, we must keep records. And there is a psychology with these people. If you are a consultant, right, or you're somebody who wants to help people with admissions or anything like that, I have people come to me, sir, I need help with this one. I will do what I call strategy session with you. Mm -hmm. but say, my strategy session is not free anyway. That's what you do. See, let, hey, let me just tell you on this call. We'll sit down with the person. Dr. Lewis is not cheap. He charges <laughs> dollars. <laughs> dollars. So anyway, yeah, so so that. so if you want to do personal statement for somebody, right? You need to understand the trajectory of that person's life. Mm. Come from the beginning. Get all the information. Don't just go and do copy and paste. It's not copy and paste. So you now script. That is called. That is something called scripting. You mm. will script. It. So even the person wants to do it on his own or, as, or on himself or herself, right? There is a narrative. That is what they call golden thread, mm. right? That will be something that goes through from begin introduction to middle to the end. There must be some consistency there. There is no lies. That's I was I always say that. Your personal saying anything you are doing, don't lie. Be truthful. That's the truth, mm -hmm. and it has worked. That's what has got me here. Okay, bam. Well, who has yes? Let them hear what the spirit is saying. If you, if <laughs> I, I'm sure that after now you will not say Mary has not helped you because this is a lot of clarity here for some person. Because see, these things they won't tell you, they won't tell you, and you'll be applying, you go and be doing, you go to the embassy, you'll be shaking, you'll be fidgeting, you'll no. be, you, you, okay, no problem. If you like, yeah, if you like, don't hear yeah, me as I am like this. I'm tired of even advising people. As I tired. This 2022, I've said it, I won't be advising people again because a lot of people use. They will just hear, they will go and do what they want to do. Mary, there's another thing that I need to say, which is very, very important. Hmm. Um, what profile do we keep online? Hmm. If you check all my handles, eh? 
I don't know. There's there's something that that's like a, a I'll call it craze. Mm. I want to post something on social media. I want to post something on social media. You are eating amalani. We do things. Oh, okay. uh, see. Let it be. Ask yourself, what do you want to post? Why are you posting? Mm. Most of my posting is to minister or to share information. Mm. I don't I don't have the time to be posting that I'm just traveling now. Like I see people, uh, they will use this um, Google map something mm -hmm. to show that they are traveling from Lagos to New York or from mm -hmm. Lagos to London or everything mm -hmm. like that. Uh, well, to what extent? Mm. Now, there are some positions that they now check your profile online. So they will check, they will take, there are some application that they will say, they will say, drop your, drop all your accounts. Mm, mm. You will, they will put Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, everything. They will say, drop it. They will now go and check mm. who is this person. Mm. Because the secret of men is in their stories. Mm. There is no way that your personality will not come up in your uh, social footprints. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So, for example, the role that I got, that's uh, where I am now, right? I got it from LinkedIn. Wow. This so is how do people do their profile? Yes, it's from LinkedIn. So, so people, so people, he, he, what do you post on? How do you? Um, my name is Olani Waji Lewis. I'm not Larenzi. <laughs> Larry for short. <laughs> you go to somebody's Facebook profile, it will put uh, okay. Otiket, Otikiti, or something like that, wherever. OPP, KPK, OPG. Uh, <laughs> what now? Be truthful. Dr. See, Lewis, I, don't, what, I don't like if, the table. I don't like this table you are shaking. And it is not. It is not. You are even saying it gently for me. Like you are just saying it, but this thing that deep conversation is hitting some of us. I please. I don't. I don't like this table. This this table is standing on one leg. <laughs> hey, Jesus. <laughs> they all matter. I'm. I will be factual with you. Mm -hmm. the university where I am now is one of the top twenty in the UK. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you if you feel that you want to go global, mm. eh, and you are spoiling your profile because you're in Nigeria, I like the way uh, uh, J O puts it. Mm. John Obedi. Mm -hmm. He said your fight is different from from Nigeria, from Africa. Well, your well, fight well. is different. <laughs> I like that statement that he always says, your fight is different. Mm. People don't understand. Mm. Mm. You are a global citizen. If you want to be a global citizen, you must be doing things global. Mm. Global, global standard, global ethics. Mm. Global ethics. So the conversation around ethics, like so people don't even know that there are some level of, you know, discipline that is required of them to get to some height and to attain some height. And it's so unfortunate that, you know, my generation, I don't know, I don't know, like, it is what it is. It is what it is. So let, let's let's bring, let's uh, try and bring this conversation to a close now, you know. So yeah. Yeah. let's look at um, how can people begin to benefit from these opportunities, you know, that are around, um, where can probably even, where can people even find them? You know, are there resources that people can check? Um, I there, I don't even know if there are probably um, DIYs, you know, available for people, right. to, you know, sit and study, learn through. To so that okay, you know what? By the time I go through this thing and I read through or I go through this right. document, I'll be able to, you know, get yeah. some level of knowledge and um, information. Okay, okay, very good. Now, for starters, right, we're in December, today is December 17, and um, the year is just like 14 days left. If you want to explore studying abroad for 2022, things that I feel you must 
tick the box you must tick in the next 14 days. Mm -hmm. One, your passport. Okay. Two, do you have your transcripts? If you are considering masters or PhD, your transcript should be with you now. If you want to position for funding opportunities, you see the funding opportunities close faster than the deadline for the admissions. Mm. Because they want to consider the people early and know who they want to fund, right? So it's better to be positioned for something than for the opportunity to come like an elevator and you're not ready to go in. It will close and go up. There are some things that will close in February. There are some that will close in March, which I know. There are some that will close in April, right? And they cut across different countries in Europe, right? There are some that are in the UK. For the UK, I will tell everybody free of charge. PhD is better for you to get full funding. That is if you have a master's anyway. If you want to do master's, and you want it to be on funding, get your transcript for first degree now. Mm -hmm. And be ready to apply because there are some things that will come that will be closed in February, there are some that will close in March, there are some that will close in April. The max is around April. So, and there's also an institution in the UK currently, um, they started that thing in I think August or July uh, this year and they have extended it into this coming session. And on their website, they say that they are not going to push it further. And that institution is University of Hall. They slash their fees by 50%. So if you are hell bent on saying that it is UK that I want to go, right? They have just seven courses available for, PhD, for, for masters and it is 50% scholarship. So that means you are paying almost the same thing like a home student, whole university. That one is there. The admission is open. If you want to come in for this next year that is coming, that is one place you want to look at. If you can, if you are hell bent on saying that it's UK that I want. But if you don't mind European countries, because those ones are cheaper, right? There are, there are opportunities around and I think maybe I will just bring up something and create a DIY yes, for people. Yes, please, please. And we'll just create a DIY. But of course, the DIY will not be FOC. I like because it's a lot of work. Me, I will not allow it to be FOC. No, no, it can't be. It can't be. No, it can't be. Anybody that wants information should be ready to pay for it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe we'll, maybe we'll come up with a DIY for, for people, right? Uh, for, for those things because, um, see, I tell people, I want people to come. Um, let me put it this way. Exposure. Seeing the world changes your worldview. If you remain in a cocoon, in a system that does not give you the wings to fly, you may not hmm. attain onto what you are supposed to get. get or you may be delayed. So hmm. since the opportunity is there for you to fly, please, by all means, fly. Fly. I am pro-Nigeria any day. Hmm. I am pro-Africa any day. I'm also pro-Africa every day. But there's something, there's something about you building capacity to be able to help, right? Hmm. This is a season where people will build the capacity. Don't let us overflog it. The environment is not going to help some people to fly. So you need to get out, get trained, get the capacity, build the international network. Now, why am I saying this? Go and check out the things that are happening in Nigeria of late. The pay stack of this world, right? Mm. It was international collaboration. Those guys were not based in Nigeria before they came to Nigeria. Mm. Mrs. Funke Opeke of May 1, who just, who just got a, 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 a May 1 to be sold, um, they bought for $350 million. Yeah, she yeah. was in the US when she came to set up May 1. 
what, what am I trying to say? Mm -hmm. If you ask, if you check uh, co-creation hall, my my uh, fr uh, friend uh, uh, Bosun, Bos Bosun is was based in the UK before he came to set up co-creation hall. Mm -hmm. What am I trying to say? There is something about you seeing the wall that makes you to see okay, this is the possibility. Wider view. So you, mm. see, you have wider view to things. Better less. Yes. So you cannot come and take all this experience and come and transform things. The person who is changing the face of short legs in Nigeria today, KG Giwa, right? Hmm. He's, he has been based in the UK, running digital company in the UK, and he came to Nigeria and started short legs and changed your landscape. There is something that when you see the outside, you see things clearly. Yes, there are opportunities in Africa. Yes, there are opportunities in Nigeria. But if you are not equipped to be able to maximize those opportunities, if you are not equipped to build the network, hmm. the network of people, friends, that will buy into it, right? The estate that celebrities live in, Lekki, right? The person who owns that estate, left Nigeria when he was um, maybe in his early 20s, came mm. to UK. The person, I don't want to mention the name, he, 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 you can go and find out. He left Nigeria, came to the UK. By the time he was leaving UK, he had about 80 houses. Hey, 80! He, he said, he's, yes, this one is on exaggeration. You can go and watch the video on um, the video channel of... Uh, What's the name of this Ghanaian guy that runs YouTube? He runs YouTube on African narratives. Hmm. The name just went off my head now. But you can get the whole story there. When the guy came to Nigeria, he said that his friend said, that, okay, you go. And he, hmm. they, they joined forces together. And he started that kind of, he started building uh, estates that were not common, condos and all these things. Things that are different. Because so, again, he has seen the kind of houses over he has there. Seen, right? Yes. Mm. So he brought a kind of excellence into the real estate space. So, what am I trying to say? Hmm. See, by all means, travel. Opportunities will come, explore it, but you need to be prepared for it. It's going mm -hmm. to expose you, it's going to enlarge your post. I have friends all over. So, if, and you build your integrity also, you build your network. So by the time, maybe in the next five years, 10 years, whatever, and they now say that, okay, you want to go and change the narrative in an industry, you want to go and do something. You were able to bring that whole network into the system because they know they can trust you. Mm -hmm. And you're able to change things. Yes, private sector is going to change the country. Private sector is going to change Nigeria. But the people, if you are not empowered, you can't do it. Empowerment, you need to step out. Mm -hmm. That is my own. Whoa. Dr. Lewis, this is this is gold. Thank you so much. I know that your time is not even is not even easy to get. I, I know, but Doctor, I'm so grateful. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very for much, Mary. Time to do this. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Like we look Thank forward to um, maybe by the time you work on the DIY, please let us know. Yeah. Okay. We are yeah. going to share it everywhere so that these people can no begin to get these things and begin to learn and prepare themselves for adequately for no the problem. opportunities they so desire. Thank you so much, sir. No problem. I'm grateful. Let, me, let me give you now to go for your other business. Thank you so much. Do have a great day. All right. Nice one, man. Yay. Well done on the job you are doing. Well done. <laughs> you are really you good. So I, I, I honor somebody who is Thank so you, enterprising you, and vibrant like yourself. Aww. Keep up the good work, Mary. I you, awesome. <laughs> hey, it's not easy for Dr. Lewis to be happy. I have to. This particular part, I will cut it out of this interview and save it. Because one day, one day, I will need it. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. All right, now. So Cheers. All right. Sir. Have a wonderful have a day. Very great day. All right, sir. Bye, you too. Bye. Yeah, so guys, that is all. Let me let me remove Dr. Lewis from this session. Whoa, guys, that is an amazing session. If you learned something, please, you know how we do it. Comment, share, subscribe. I'm hoping that this series, you know, I'm bringing your way will be able to shine some light on your path. 
you know, and help you to navigate because truth is by all means, if you can, please travel. Just see the world from another view. It's, it's, so, it's so beautiful, guys. It's so beautiful, you know, to even be able to sit with people of different colors and, you know, thinking faculty, you know what I'm saying? It's so beautiful. Again, I'm saying it, this session is for people who want to go global, people who are interested in, you know, living their local confines and, you know, getting on to see the world, getting on to do better things and doing bigger things. I wish you all the best and I'm rooting for you. I love you. Have a great day, guys. Cheers. Bye.